Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. Uh, today we're covering uh, book one, Dawn, of the Xenogenesis trilogy by Octavia Butler, and we're talking about chapters nine and ten from part two, Family. Uh, actually, we're recording this back to back with the previous chapter that we did as I'm I'm moving, so uh, need a little bit of extra time. But uh, hello to my co-host Michael. Hi, Richard. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so heavy chapter last time. Uh, yes, lots it's of um, heavy. fun and sensitive topics to. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, discuss. I'm definitely definitely. If this episode's gonna go, when the episode's gonna go out, and if mm-hmm. somebody you know when our viewers or listeners, sorry, more mm-hmm. um, get to listen to it and it gets spread somewhere else into areas that to people that are very sensitive about this. I'm sure we're gonna get nice positive feedback, don't you think? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're 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 very happy. I persuaded you to do this. <laughs> oh my god, I just feel like it's gonna be a. I just hope that from all what we said last time, mm-hmm. we just want to say we are not expert. We know quite a lot about biology, as from our background. Uh, you could say we are some specialists in certain uh, fields, but we are nowhere near to be psi- uh, specialists in psychology and neuroscience. So. If yeah, anything, we just give our own opinion. Mm. As much as yep. we try to be understanding of every, all the possible sides of, a, uh, of the argument. Yeah, just two guys talking. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Without alcohol. Although, it'd be interesting to record one with mm. alcohol. Although, Richard doesn't drink. Just Yeah, that would so be a It'll be me getting point. smashed <laughs> <laughs> while Richard making fun out of me. Yeah, I, I don't need a, an, another advantage there because I, I know the future in this book, right? So, can, <laughs> oh my god, I, yes, I, I can already exploit that to seem smart. <laughs> um. <laughs> True. Although, I, to be honest, when I get drunk, I get really, really talkative. So I feel like once I would sober up and start listening to the recording to edit it, I think I'll have to delete like ninety nine percent of it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> anyway, yeah. right. So let's uh, let's start out with uh, your your predictions. Um, yes. So. so my last prediction, last la- my last chapter prediction for chapter nine was that Lilith will wake up uh, with Nikanj near her, at least, pro- or trying to protect her, or just taking care of her. And mm-hmm. obviously, if her being angry and in pain, um, feeling betrayed by Nikanj and Kaguya. Well, Kaguya probably less because she probably pred- ex- expected some behavior like that from him yeah um, for choosing the human the, the the type of human we encountered hmm. yeah and, and it was it was on Kaguyat's kind of recommendation wasn't it he was the yes, one who found paul yes and uh Nikant was just like okay uh he'll do but we never I, I don't think they expected at least i hope they didn't but anyway we'll get to mm. that mm-hmm. and obviously live feeling betrayed by Nikant, you know yeah, and I'm not sure she had a a, a relationship with with um, uh, Kaguya, wherein she would feel betrayed. Yeah, it's just, uh, I think sufficiently that'd... mistrustful to start with. Then. I think that would be just a yeah. feeling of expectation at this point from yeah. him. Mm. <laughs> Man, oh my god, I just cannot imagine to have a character so hated. But I think he's still not as hated as Dolores uh, Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, she's, uh, I mean, she was basically designed to be hated, oh, yeah. more or less, uh, ex- exclusively, yeah. So Kaguyat has kind of the, there's a little bit of a benefit of the doubt you get just from the alienness, right? It's hard to read an alien character, but uh, yeah, so I, I my initial reaction to him was not quite as strongly, or it rather, was not quite as strongly negative as yours has been. But I tend to read stuff pretty dispassionately, and then kind of when I come back to it, I, I, I get more of that, uh, you know, the, the stuff that you, you notice that the author was was trying to do, uh, mm. and, and so on. Uh, when I when I reread stuff, but uh, yeah, this exercise has been quite interesting because it, it's revealing stuff that I kind of missed on first pass. Listen, when you're really on, you're really uh, correct on this because when I was this, when the book six of Harry Potter came out, and mm-hmm. I mean, how many years has it been? It's it's not a spoiler. When Dumbledore dies, I cried. Okay, mm-hmm. I 
cried about from a book mm-hmm. for a book character. So it's um, yeah, I get passionate about certain kind of things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it depends how much I'm I'm in the story, and mm. yeah, yeah. I've I have had that experience where I've been sufficiently in it that I I get really you know emotional about the characters. But it, it does tend to be on rereads. Yeah, when I'm really bought in. So, yeah. on that note, <laughs> shall we begin yes. the summary then? Mm-hmm. So the chapter starts with Lilith awakening to the voices of Nikanj and Kaguya with Nikanj telling Kaguya to go away and Kaguya being surprised how Nikanj is growing faster than it thought. Hmm. And so we are left with Lilith and Nikanj alone, with Lilith realizing that her whole, whole body is in pain, her jaw, her side, her head, and in particular her left arm. And Nikanj starts the conversation by explaining to her that it, it didn't know that it would happen. But, you know, Lilith argues back, you know, how can you not predict something like that Mm -hmm. being isolated no paul being isolated for so long and it seems that nikanj doesn't understand it as it says that his family took care of him i paul paul's family took care of uh, paul but lilith then realized that the difference between human and car you know it's it's the fact that there's such different and nikanj not realizing that the human contact Mm. is necessary that's I think, yeah, the, big yeah the, the kind of the lack of comprehension of the weird dynamic that results from this this family structure kind of adopting this this human mm. is is not it's not something that seems odd to to Nikanj. It, it's it, it, the that understanding just isn't there and it leads her to to feel this kind of gulf of understand of of, of lack of understanding between them it's a... i feel like i would i could put it in a way to sort of make it more related to our lives is that when you when people have animals right pets mm-hmm. you know, and they separate i don't know the children from the birth of the animal and the animal behaves you know looking for them and stuff mm-hmm. like that it's it's not there yet, but very similar to what I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We very much experience so. here. And there's so. a definite kind of. Um, uh, you see it especially with animals that have strong social bonds in Absolutely. their natural habitat, wherein you basically replace their social needs with the needs being met by the human who's working with the animal as a particular case in, in things like in working animals where you have you know like dogs for for um uh, sheep um mm-hmm. herding and then um that's an interesting thing with um uh falcons so it's uh, harris hawks mm-hmm. yeah harris hawks they're a very social species they hunt in packs they have a lot of oh. social intelligence um which makes them really great falconry birds um, effectively, because they they like they take communication well, they'll take cues from a human handler very well, um, and it's kind of it's similar in other situations. So, the successfully domesticated animals are often quite social in in their um, natural environment. If they're, they're like working animals, like like dogs and so on, mm-hmm. or falcons, uh, where you can take the role of someone in their social space or another animal in their social space and kind of force that relationship with them. I mean, it's, it's you know, coercive and the, the question of like, you know, animal um, rights and all the rest of it comes into it. But it is a, it's a good analogy to this kind of situation mm. with human because you're taking a human out of their human social environment and supplanting those relationships with ones with the, the Owen Carly. Uh, that makes for kind of a, kind of a weird dynamic. I also heard that um, parrots are very social uh, animals yes. and they need to have another parrot in the house because otherwise they will quite simply go insane. They will shout, they will mess around. It's, they need some this um, another presence. Uh, yeah, they're, in they're the definitely house. They're, they're, they're bright and they really interact with you. Like, um, I once, um, our family kind of looked after a friend's African grey parrot, uh-huh. which are, are known to be very good at like talking and so on. And that, that you know, it's a very smart bird. It would actually, it would say hello to you. Uh, that it, it, if you you came and like lifted the cover off of its calling uh, cage in the, in the morning, it would it'd be sat on the other side. Always like wherever you lifted up the thing, it would be sat right on the other side of the cage. Knew where you were. I don't know how it did it. 
uh, and it would say, hello. Hello. Oh, so cute. Yeah. And it would do things like um, whistling competitions. So uh, you, you, it would make a tune, a little pattern, and then you would whistle something back to imitate it. And it mm-hmm. would just elevate the complexity until you couldn't imitate it back. And then it would <laughs> laugh at you for not being able to imitate the pattern that it made. That's so brilliant. Was, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're uh, smart birds. Uh, uh, so I think this, yeah, this idea of, you know, separating individuals of a certain species from their community, considering how strong their bonds, community bonds are, hmm. it's a problem. I think this is quite obvious here. Uh, yeah, a, a strong resemblance. Uh, yeah. But this is where, you know, Nick, there's a bit of a bomb being thrown, you know, like... Um, then, you know, Nikant tells her, his family thought you should have mated with him. They knew you wouldn't stay with him permanently, but they believed you would share sex with him at least once. Which is, like, yeah, really? I mean, do you think uh, that anybody will just jump another person's pants just because, you know, just like that? Even though the first human they see, you've seen before? Like, you know. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, I suppose when people are kept in the degree of isolation that they are, maybe, but... Uh, I guess yeah. so. But anyway, to which Lilith responds and then get pregnant. But we learn that Nikanj tells her that she cannot and as she is in some form of birth control and it will be undone when she is ready, decided by her. Yeah. And it's another one of those like things we did while you were asleep without telling you surprise yeah there's another one yeah uh we've sterilized you reversibly but yeah there's... and it says that when she is ready but nikan still you know because she it's an argument between with her and nikan hmm. you know like so who's gonna who's deciding when i'm gonna you know and he goes well you little if you hmm. so i guess it is some um psychological um trigger for her to hmm. become a uh, to remove that birth control, but who knows? Um, well, I, I think it's still in the hands of the Owen Carly, uh, but just that uh, I, I don't, I don't think they'd let her choose earlier. Well, maybe who knows? But I said this definitely. They, they they have a hand in that decision. Oh, yeah, I think I'm assuming absolutely. that they have to do something to absolutely. her before she will be, uh, you know restored to her uh, fertility but it's uh, yeah uh... but the thing is you say that the next part of the um, paragraph actually sentence she it shows that she is actually she feels that Nikanj is very sincere about it like it hmm. seems not not only being or not only be telling the truth as usual but telling the truth that it's considered important yeah and it's interesting that it, it, it seems to consider it uh, very important that she have some degree of autonomy over that decision making process yes although you know it feels like a bit of a small nugget of of freedom um, it's interesting the the sort of moral position of of Nakanj in all this because you know, it comes across as as, as much more um well, much better than than Kaguya, but perhaps still not quite uh, in the best place. It's uh... it feels more like Nikanj has overtaken now Chitaya. Hmm. Like hmm. originally, as Chitaya was the um, the being, the person who uh, Lilith was um, being supported by, in a way. But then he yeah, sub- yeah. disappears completely, and Nikanj is taken over. And I, in fact, Nikanj is more. Um, I don't know. I, it feels to me. I don't know. Is Kaguya really an asshole, or is he just you no? Know, as we mentioned two episodes ago, he's just playing the villain. Uh, although, then again, he does yeah, say that no, we shouldn't treat the people we, they trade with as equal to Onkali. Hmm. So who hmm. knows? Yep. I so think going back to that idea of. Uh, judging people from their own cultural context uh, this is normal practice for them right this is the the, yes. the way in which they go about integrating new species into their uh you know into their gene pool as it were they're, 
how they do this trade thing that they do. Um, and it, it does seem as though Nakanj is genuinely interested in, in doing that process in as kind of um, in, in as good a way as possible, right? He, he mm-hmm. wants Lilith's consent for for stuff. Uh, he, he wants her to volunteer, um, as it were. But it's it's still very much not a voluntary undertaking for for the people who are being integrated into this. So it's a, a it's a weird dynamic because they, they you know his his perspective is clearly that he's trying to do the like the best in the context that they're in mm-hmm. but the whole context is uh yeah um very coercive yeah Lilith then asks if it's true um that Paul Titus had more than 70 children and hmm. Nikanj tells her yes that's correct because Toa must at least have an equal number uh, of humans to stay on the ship and Nikanj argues to Lilith that he should have never been told this but Lilith disagrees as he deserves to know although what she said to him confirmed his fears that maybe one of his family members was impregnated and then Lilith then asks if this has been done to her to which Nikanj answers no but the Toa have the print of every human on the ship as so if one day they need her her body may be reborn on the ship. Not a clone, mm. but a memory, a gene map. Uh, but even though Lilith would want it destroyed, the can tells her it's impossible because it's a memory carried by several people. And Lilith just hopes that then that her future clone, or future her in a way, will be fine, to which Nikan responds by sitting beside her and touching her aching left arm with several head tentacles. Did you really need to know that? As should I have really told you? Yeah, again, that kind of uh, with uh, Nikanj trying to do his, its best in this uh, scenario, like it's questioning whether or not its its actions are in Lilith's best interest. Mm. I need to say this memory of a person, like the print. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's remarkable, like that. It's so amazing that they have this ability to, to. Yeah, I, I think it it comes back to what we discussed before about this notion of having like a genetic memory. Because mm-hmm. I I still I, I my like my way of making sense of this is that they must have some kind of way of of like uh, effectively having an actual copy of of the DNA of the person mm-hmm. whom they've got a print of, right? and that that must be a part of the way that their their memory system works. Um, although, of course, you need considerably more than just the genome sequence to get, uh, like, to, to sort of bootstrap the development process and get a whole person growing, mm-hmm. because the, the 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 genome, like, the information on the genome has a whole bunch of assumptions about what its environment is in order for it to start the developmental process. Right? It mm-hmm. it, it needs to have a certain epigenetic state. It needs to be certain things present in the cell. Um, before you can go from you know, just a piece of DNA to a uh, to a whole human, it's like yes. having a piece of computer code in a text file, right? And unless you have the right processor, and it won't, it doesn't do anything, right? You have to take like there are assumptions about the environment in which the code is going to run that are required in order for it to run successfully. The same thing is true of biological code, right? The the assumptions about you know, in code, it's like you know the instruction set architecture of the processor or whatever, right? It, it, that is built in to the code. Mm, the same yes. thing is true of the genetic code. It, 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 there are assumptions about what the environment will be in order for it to execute successfully, which means that you need all that additional information instead of in just the sequence. So it would be interesting to know how they represent that stuff in order to start that process off in addition to just having a memory of the sequence but to be honest i feel like um this this idea of you know having the memory of the person right Hmm. like is it really necessary though because i mean you could have just the genetic material and you could just as they have the ability to make the babies right to so why not just make hmm. a copy well not copy but like use the genetic material to make other babies i mean if you want just material of a human and then 
let the person, you know, to just for a genetic variety or just be able to, mm. you don't really need um, a whole memory of this of those people unless I don't know you want to have the memories of them of the person like no sorry the memories that the person had that's what i mean like you know those those things but so i don't know the knowledge of that person could had somewhere stored right but mm. overall i feel like if this is just for genetic material you, i don't think you need to go to that extent don't you think um well i think my interpretation of it there was that it because of the way that their 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 memory and and the the way of kind of like this genetic sense that they have, this ability to perceive people's genetics works. I assume that they just sort of end up with a copy of your genome in their memory when they, you know, when they when they touch you and, and do something where they get some of your cells. They just have a, you know, they've 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 seen your genome, so they remember it now. Mm -hmm. I've got effectively got a copy of it stored somewhere, and they can just, um, you know, potentially completely recreate you from that. But then again, it. It, you know, recreating a human being. You know, if I if if I clone myself, obviously it wasn't hmm. being me because the experiences and my memories. Oh yeah, yeah, are in my brain. So obviously it wouldn't be the same person. But the problem is, is that is this? So is this in uh, this paragraphs suggesting that they actually not only have the the genetic sort of uh, memory, but also the memories of the person, like you know, all those knowledge uh, they have. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, look, I got the. I got the impression that um, I'm pretty sure that that Nikanj said that it it would be a, a different person, right? It wouldn't have her memories. It would just be effectively a clone, mm. um, but not not a clone in the way that we do cloning with you know somatic nuclear transfer and, and all that kind of stuff, right? It's yeah. not it's not taking a like an existing copy of a genome from a cell that's human and putting it in a um an egg but rather you know taking a a, a memory of, of that genome and creating a new cell yeah like, I guess. completely de novo i think that's the distinction um but i don't think there's anything about the specific memories unless of, well i mean i suppose this this genetic memory ability that they have they might be able to convey some of that, I mean, it depends how that works, right? We're still unclear about yeah. some of the specifics of, of how that might function. Well, we have no idea how our brains function, so how the hell can yeah can we explain? <laughs> it's it? all speculative, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we, we don't know what the the in world rules that govern that process are, yeah. as it were, um, and yeah. irrespective of their relationship to to actual plausibility as a mechanism. But yeah, it's uh, so there there may be copies of varying degrees of fidelity of her uh it's interesting born thousands it's... of years in the future on a ship traveling between the stars in Lilith one and Lilith two. <laughs> yep. It's quite a it's a pretty weird notion. Yeah, I think it's a really weird notion to, to like imagining myself as a one my copy of myself experiencing completely something different, not related to me in any way. And yet being me and not being me. I think it's just a teleportation conundrum, isn't it? If, uh... mm. Yeah. If it's just cloning, right, you've got the whole, you know, it's, it's identical twins, right? So it's not that strange in some ways. But if there's a component of the genetic memory, then it's, yeah, it becomes closer to that whole teleportation problem, the question of uh, identity and so on. I guess, well, I think the only solution to that is basically destroying the original clone and the original and just having the clone just to uh, <laughs> solve the problem. Yeah, but then, I mean, have you actually, yeah, I mean, it, it gets really uh, <laughs> tricky to say. I know, right? I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just teasing because I know this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this would go mm. into a very uh, deep, mm. deep and yep. far conversation. <laughs> yeah. if, any, if anyone wants some, some really weirdly mind-boggling explorations of, of that kind of theme than um, Permutation City by um, uh, I forgot the author's name it'll come back to me at some point but yeah the book's called Permutation City that's a whole bunch of like uh, a guy basically doing experiments on copies of his own consciousness that he's uploaded to a computer to see like what the limits of um, identity are mm -hmm. uh, uh, doing things like 
what happens if he runs a simulation of his mind with like the order of all the operations scrambled like does the so you know like the time points are executed out of sequence on cpu cycles so it simulates the whole thing but in a completely random order and does that mean that the person the like simulation actually experiences it normally or does it mean that it doesn't have an ex- yeah there's this whole really uh, weird exploration of a whole bunch of themes in that space so say again what is the name of the book, book? permutation city okay um, i'll i personally definitely yeah. will also read that it sounds interesting yeah and there's a whole bunch of other weird stuff in there that's also very interesting it's a, a lot of very hard sci-fi from that author um nice. but you know, permutation city is uh, definitely worth reading right uh, but yeah we're returning to this book yeah let's return to uh xenogenesis <laughs> mm. so we continue with um lilith being surprised by nikan touching her arm um because he says that it says that you know she felt pain, so he it he I keep saying he it wants to prevent uh, um, prevent it, and he can still insist the question: Did you really need to know? To which Lilith responds that it concerned her, so she needed to which so she needed to know have possessed that knowledge about you no know, if, uh, and to which Nikan mm. responds: I'll remember that, and it feels that to Lilith that she finally communicated something very important to to him. And the conversation mm-hmm. shifts about Paul uh, to Paul to his whereabouts and the consequences of his actions, and he kind of tells her that he's asleep and will be asleep for a long while, at least a year, because he was enraged and attacked his family. And but he kind of tells her that his talked family will wait, as their family bonds are beautiful and very strong, as he describes it. But Lilith refutes mm-hmm. that they are not his real family, as his real family is dead. He had no one to teach him to be a man, and that's the consequence of the situation. And mm. yes, yeah, so as we kind of called out in the last yeah. episode, right? Yeah. It's uh, uh, Lilith is kind of confirming some of that attitude, right? It, it's uh, she seems still uh, like her anger is very much directed at the Oan Kali, and not really so much towards Paul. She, she still seems to feel mostly pity for him yes. more than anything else. I mean, still uh, uh, sort of physically afraid of him where she put back in the same space. But it's, yeah, she's she's angry at them for for what they did to him and what that meant that he did to her. It's, uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, so the whole situation, you know, um, happened because his so-called family, as she describes uh, the Todd family, mm. set him up to do what he did, and what Paul did, to which Nikanj tells her even though he told Paul's family and his well, and their family that Lilith would never agree to that, you know, you know sex and all those, you know, situation mm. they all ignored him, but yeah. Nikanj promised that it's the last time that it will ever happen and I think this is quite interesting because this is the first time that really we have a an on Kali on fully on Lilith's sides in this situation. Yeah, it's it's quite revealing about the dynamics there, and that they're kind of brushing aside Nikanj's opinion that you know that you know if we put the humans together, they'll 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 mate. But you know that that's not what the uh, what Nikanj expects because he understands the humans better, which is kind of his. His function, right? Mm. That's what the um the, the Dinso are supposed to do. They're uh, supposed to integrate the new species. Uh, yeah, and it's I don't know, I wonder what's gonna happen next with Nikanj and Lilith, but I guess, you know well, we'll see next chapter, but in overall I th- what I mean is in long term, you know, because in fact hmm. if she goes training, I wonder if he if they're gonna stay but anyway. Um, so the chapter ends basically with Nikanj forcing Lilith to sleep, considering she's you know in pain, and Lilith just before she loses her consciousness says, "Let me sleep again. Put me where they put him, i.e., Paul. I've no more. I've no. I'm no more what you people think than he was. Put me back. Find someone else." And this is where the chapter ends. Hmm. It's it's. I think it's quite heavy on her in general that you know the whole situation and then it's heavy on Nikanj as well because one he needed to prove himself 
itself. It had to prove itself to um, that he it's capable of doing what an adult Uloi can. And finally, mm. Lilith agrees to do it. So he it has proven, but it, yet it didn't have the deciding voice. Mm. It's like I don't know. It's it sometimes feels to me it's it's very res- reminiscent to what often families and you know human families are like. Mm-hmm. A lot of teenagers are still trying to find themselves. You know, there's still that that war period of life between the age I think fourteen, fifteen to eighteen, mm-hmm. where you're not treated as an adult yet, and you're not a child anymore. You're in the between transition, and some people are more mature, and yeah, less mature, yeah. and yet you may have the good sort of ideas or good understanding on certain topics. You're still dismissed because. You, well, you lack the experience, obviously, in certain situations, mm. which can often weigh more than the knowledge. But often, more often, more than not, a lot of teenagers, at least those who you know are interested about the world and read a lot and uh, try to educate themselves, possess quite a lot of good opinions and knowledge to you know to to add to the argument. So it feels the same here that even though Nikanj has proven him, uh, itself. To they still dismiss him. In this specific case, there's there's reason to kind of respect its its opinion because it it has an informed position on this point. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Perspective as being closely, you know, experiencing the humans. It there's there's reason to think it it's uh, it, you know it has valid expertise as it were, but uh, yeah, it's still it's not sort of uh, respected enough. Uh, or considered mature enough to make that kind of call. It's it's weird, and it's all related to Nikanj going through the meta- metamorphosis to uh, mm. to become an adult. Like, does the sex organ is is sex organ necessary for you to actually have a valid opinion? Mm. <laughs> and just by this sentence, I've probably opened a can of worms. Well, not can of worms, but like you know, a, a conversation about a topic that you know it's very on top of the current situation, I would say, in the world. Yeah, so the the end of that chapter is just her going back to sleep again, yes, right? Yes. So it's just it's just all being put back to sleep for, for the purposes of healing her injuries. Yeah. Uh okay. So should we go to my predictions? Yep. And and Yes, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Um so unfortunately for Lilith she wakes up, and this is my prediction, she wakes up and confronts Kaguya because most likely it was his idea about um, the whole breeding plan. And Lilith formulates a plan on how to rebel against the Onkali, and then Lilith struggles with the idea of the Onkali family. And I think I completely missed okay. the spot in here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it doesn't really... Yeah, it's it's the Kaguya is not really involved as of yet. No, uh, I completely forgot that there's still a few chapters left in the whole section on the family. So, and I forgot hmm. completely. Whole I was so uh, in my mind with the whole situation, what happened with Paul, and the whole idea. You know what happened to um, Lily? I thought it was gonna continue for a bit longer, but yeah, it's, hmm. I I missed this. I, and this these predictions completely missed it. Uh, the the target, yeah. We well, kind of jump straight into um, Nikanj's the beginning of Nikanj's metamorphosis. Yes, yes. So, yeah. So the chapter ten starts with the Lilith waking up beside Nikanj, and she feels a bit dirty. You know, so she goes to take a shower, and just to find herself that for some reason she has she can smell the sour smell from her body, but she cannot get rid of it. And when she comes back, Nikanj tells her that she will get used to it soon, and now. Uh, and he it had it has given her the ability to open the walls, but only within their quarters, meaning that she can walk out the corridors or among the trees, but couldn't go mm-hmm. anywhere where Nikanj didn't want her to go. Yeah, and huh. interesting. Yeah, it's, I think it's like you know the mm. ability. So she she has to touch with all five fingers to the wall to to open it, and um, it's quite interesting, you know, like that it made her fingers produce this enzymes or at least some compounds Something. that yeah. uh, interact with the walls. This whole kind of chemosensory technology that they use for controlling their 
um, you know, their walls and doors and stuff. It's, uh, and the fact that it actually has like a an olfactory component, right? That there's you know, she actually smells different to produce these chemicals. Yeah. So it's a good little touch. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, I just feel like if I was in this situation, I was kidnapped by aliens, let's say, right? And they can modify your mm-hmm. body in any way. I'd hell go on with superhero mode. Like, can I have like you no? Know, can I walk on the walls? <laughs> can I? I don't know. Like, produce spider web? Can I be a full on Spider Man? Come on, please. <laughs> yeah, like what are the limits of this uh, this modification that you can do? That's uh, let yeah. Let's see That'd how far we can go with that. Like basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. no, that'd be an interesting re- reaction, right? It'd be interesting to meet a character who was like, "I'm all in." <laughs> <laughs> Just to, it's like, like yeah so we are gonna you know we, we, we don't want to modify your body too much no go on let's do a full-on block come yeah. on i want i don't know i want to shoot laser on my not possible okay can i shoot uh spider web <laughs> out of my butt that that's why yeah. i want that's that's <laughs> and then you know having best friends like you know the joke about mm-hmm. um genie you know what's uh, what you have one wish right and the guy goes uh, yeah, i want yeah. to have uh all the food i want to eat and the guys i want my friend to have a taste buds in his anus so that's basically, you know, it's like, can you have it? <laughs> uh, yep. So I, yeah, I, I feel like it'll be really f- interesting spin off to see this whole situation of somebody being really willing to all those modifications and giving them yeah. all, their, his own or her own ideas to, to you know, to add to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be uh, interestingly revealing about the limits of their capabilities as well. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we find, you know, that you know, Lilith just realizes that oh, Nick is trembling somewhere as if vibrating, and you know, initially ignores mm. and goes to get some food and then to go out somewhere to leave out. But as the moment she is about to leave the house, she just goes ah, and you know, realizes and goes back, gets some more food, and goes back to Nick and she goes, Your sensory arms have already begun, haven't they? Uh, mm-hmm. she asks, and then we learn that Nick is starting to actually undergo his maturation, so. She starts feeding it and tells her that it feels sexual arousal, um, but it feels more like feeling an amputated limb. And yeah, she kind of initially like recoils yes. at that uh, statement, and then it's like, you know, kind of reassures her that it's a sort of normal part of the metamorphosis yeah. process, and that it would be happening with or without her presence. Yeah, and but it. But mm. her presence does help uh, as well as eating because mm. it sort of takes the mind out of this whole situation. And mm. then Lilith asks what happens now, you know, and Nikan tells her that once its parents realize what's next, they'll send for Ahajaz and Dichang. And basically the chapter ends with Nikan's warning Lilith that it may not see or hear her during the deep sleep uh, um, during the metamorphosis and tells her if if she will stay with um, the Nikon and ask her if she will stay with her and obviously as Lily promised she will stay and she intends to keep the promise and the chapter ends with Nikan saying I was afraid good lie here and wait with me until Ahajas and uh, Dichan come and even though she was tired of lying down but she still stretches out beside it and when they come to carry me to law you help them that will tell them the first thing they need to know about you. And that's where the chapter ends. Low, I think, is a a, a place, a new, a new area. Uh, yeah, I think we've... it's... Have we had that mentioned before? No, I, it's I the first remember. time it's mentioned. Yeah. Oh, and it also mentioned in the chapter that even though Nikanj doesn't want her to tell its parents that it's going by the numbers because it's not necessary because the walls... Um, of the yeah. house already probably have informed them. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting little feature of the um, uh, the ship, right? It 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 seems it, it seems to be aware and communicating with all of its in, inhabitants to some degree, or at least sending signals. Right? Yeah. So it can it's aware that Nikanj is entering metamorphosis, and it will inform uh, the parents, but. Uh, yeah, it makes you wonder a little bit about like privacy in the Alankali society. You know, they have this like panopticon ship that sees everything. So exactly how much uh, 
Well, information is communicated by that. It's, if uh, it's in the terms of like you know the general state of the Onkali, so mm. whether they're healthy or not or something, I guess it's mm. one thing. But if it's you know like when it's like you know a private time and it, mm. you know it's who has the access to the ship's uh, knowledge, right? Hmm. That's, yeah. that's also uh, a question. Is it, you know? is it equivalent of having cameras everywhere and, and who can access that? Um, or is it just kind of general, more, more anonymous, and more a specific data um, to which only certain people have access? Uh, yeah. I wonder if it's, it's, it's interesting because it, I wonder if like if a non is in danger, right? And hmm. their families uh, are somewhere away, let's say, in other part of the ship. And, you know, mm. maybe does the ship also inform other Onkali that are in the near vicinity to, to assist the Onkali? I would imagine probably given that the, I mean, that whole thing with when Lilith put the orange in the wrong place and oh, yes. the whole, like, floor started melting and it smelled terrible and everyone was, like, attracted over to, to stare at her. Uh, I, I imagine something similar probably happens if someone's in distress, right? Mm. Something occurs that will alert everyone else to the the problem. Yeah, it's interesting. Like it's 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 a. Mm. I think it'd be very interesting modern world sort of a security. Like isn't like you have a baby and you know just like little cameras with that are sensitive to movement and sound mm. that activate when you know when the baby cries or moves, so you know that um, it's awake. And mm-hmm. so, you know, in case like take care or something, if anything goes wrong, so you're aware. But then, you know, yeah, those yeah. devices have been proven to be very securely vulnerable, like holes upon holes. And oh, yeah. yeah, they're all terrible. <laughs> and, you know, people <laughs> yeah. finding out that, you know, somebody's spying on their children or something is something sick like mm. that. So, yeah, the, the, the whole Internet of Things stuff, like all, all of those devices basically have unbelievably terrible cybersecurity stuff uh, and like it, if it's taken video and it's an iot thing I, I, iot thing that it's probably uh hackable or uh, if it's connected to some cloud service then oh know, yeah that's even up- worse uploading all that data somewhere and putting it on someone's server probably not secured properly uh, you know, if you follow cybersecurity news at all, then you you yeah. despair. To be honest, of, of ever. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you if you or yeah, as a reason, if you follow any cybersecurity um, websites or news, you most people who do that are very very paranoid with using stuff <laughs> like that. Usually, anybody who works in IT barely ever has anything more smart i would say than like maybe in a smartphone but that's the only that's the limit i would say people go i mean that for me one of the most revealing things is that frequently nowadays laptop webcams come built in like pre-built into the device there's a little thing that lets you like close the cover over it right that says you cannot trust the hardware or software in this computer to a degree that you need a physical barrier between you and the camera yeah right. if you, you can't trust that the camera is off you can't trust that yeah it, it's it's not a good situation even even zucky boy our mark zuckerberg <laughs> the creator of uh, facebook his uh computers are his microphones and um uh, cameras are completely covered with tape there was a video of interview mm, yeah. with him, and it's like in the sh- corner of the shot, you could see that he's complete tapes over everything. Oh yeah, yeah. The the, the people who know what uh, what it is that these uh, the companies that collect all this data are, are actually uh, trying to do with it and are capable of with it yeah, uh, are uh, among the most paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, should tell the rest of us something. No, honestly, <laughs> it really does. So if you ever yeah. If anybody's listening and has a child of buying other children, if you ha- if you want to safety cameras, just get something that only physically contains a cover next to your computer and doesn't have internet connection. Yeah, don't get IoT things. Anything that's connected to the internet, just just no. Just, just, yeah, get get something that's local only. Yeah. Um, or I mean, it, if you have the wherewithal, you can make your own internet connected stuff and host it on your own systems, but. Uh, anything that you're buying that has a cloud service associated with it, it probably can't be trusted 
it's a really bad situation and for all that I stuff. Just get a walkie-talkie, yeah. one of those really cheap ones that have this distance, like mm. range of, I don't know, several meters, and that's it. Like that should be hopefully enough to hear if anything goes wrong. But Yeah, you're probably better off with uh, going old school. Yeah. yeah. But mm. anyway, I just thought it would be interesting, like this sort of um, system for, you know, mm. protecting people. Yeah, because there's a huge amount of potential for using that kind of awareness of the environment using those kind of, of data for your for your good um right, having that kind of um information about yourself and your own behavior and about other people about what's going on with them that can, that can be very useful mm. that can be very helpful for for health stuff for, for caring for the elderly for caring for the very young for uh, just for you know, reflecting on you know your own behavior to improve stuff right if you've got good data about yourself then you, know, you can make progress yes. the, the problem is is uh, ownership over that data and what it's currently being used for because at the moment it's very um dark arts nudge stuff it's 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 all being employed to try and sell you more stuff rather than it, in anything that's particularly uh useful and the any of the useful stuff is more of a uh, a side effect of, of what can we offer in exchange for for uh, your privacy targeted advertising yeah yeah, yeah. As uh, the economics of it are pretty screwed up at present, but I imagine we'll uh, figure a way out of it before too long, because people are beginning to wake up to the reality of it. Uh, I do to see how far. Yeah, it gets. I do hope so that we soon will wake up and finally um, there will be changes to the whole situation on like the data collection and you know uh, what data co- uh, companies allowed to collect and stuff like that. Because it's 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 ridiculous. Um, hmm. Yeah, that was quite a, a tangent. Yes, from the the surveil the possible surveillance and monitoring by the the ship of the Ancali onto the what's going on in our society and the tech. It's, yeah, we love going on tangent, don't we? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a there's a connection. Yeah, there is there's a, a connection. connection. Well, if there's a connection, the conversation will go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So, hmm. shall we go to the chapter eleven prediction? Uh, yeah, okay. So I put two things, that we will meet the uh, Ahtias and Dichon, and that Lilith will help move Nikanj to law. That was two things I put down. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that seems pretty reasonable. And I think we are left with two more chapters from this section, part two family. And mm-hmm. then we have nursery, chapter three, well, section mm. three, nursery, um, so I think this is my a bit long term prediction because next two chapters will end with a big cliffhanger. I feel so. Judging by the section name nursery, I think there's gonna be something interesting. Like I don't know, maybe finally Nikansh, you know, becoming an adult and then a little baby on Kali, and then Lilith is gonna learn how to take care of them, or maybe. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. they live meeting young humans. Who knows? It's yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, I, I like hearing the speculations about the the name of the next part. That's uh, that's because to be honest, I thought that next section is gonna be the training, but then I just looked at the ebook. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, actually, it's nursery. It's like, ooh, ooh. So we are still mm-hmm. a bit away from uh, the training that was mentioned by Nikanj two chapters ago. So, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. It's been interesting. Interesting. Let's see how that pans out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just uh, staying quiet here. <laughs> so annoying. So annoying. Okay. Then. Right, everyone. Thank you for listening. Uh, we are at the Xenothesis. You can find all our uh, episodes and all possible uh, available media uh, on xenothesis.com. Yep. The links are there. I was Michael Glinka. All the podcatchers. I've been Richard Acton. And goodbye, everyone. See you soon. Goodbye.